trends, the Wisconsin Historical Museum's latest exhibit is Wisconsin Women of Style. Joining us now is Leslie Belays, the show's curator and fashion expert. And boy, this is going to be a very exciting exhibit. It's going on right now through March 29th. March 29th. And tell me a little bit about the exhibit. Well, it's, uh, we decided to focus on significant women of, Matt, of Wisconsin wearing significant dresses at significant occasions. Because you think of, you know, parkas with fashion and Wisconsin women, but these are designers from the likes of Paris. Paris and Italy is the two designer, the two areas we primarily f uh, focused on. Now, as the show's curator, you certainly know a lot about these dresses. We're going to take a look at some right now to give you a little <laughs> sneak peek before you go to take in this amazing exhibit. Well, the first dress is our prize piece. It's a uh, Charles Worth uh, gown. Charles Worth was the father of Haute Couture, and it was worn by Mrs. Lucius Fairchild. She was the governor's wife, uh, who was also a diplomat in Europe, and she wore this to the uh, court of the king and queen of Spain. Oh, and there is the picture of her wearing that dress. Beautiful. This dress is by Emile Pingat. Uh, Emile Pingat was Worth's uh, competitor, and this was worn by Mrs. T.A. Chapman, T.A. Chapman Department Stores in Milwaukee. She didn't shop at her husband's store. She went to France to, to buy her dress. Oh, I'm sure there were some discussions about that as well. <laughs> and this is worn by Mrs. Ch uh, Mrs. Uh, Goodrich. She was the daughter of uh, Charles, uh, Captain Frederick Pabst, actually. So this is the Pabst family. This piece was made in Frankfurt, Germany by a French dressmaker. It's pretty spectacular. Look at that and how it's been preserved. I mean, this is, we're talking late 19th. This is right around the turn of the century. This is about 1900, 1903. That's amazing that it's just so well preserved. This dress is actually quite fun. This is a Mirgor, uh, it's House of Mirgor, which was a Russian family, but they were in Paris, France, and it was worn by Mrs. Vogel at her wedding. She, her father was the uh, mayor of Chicago. Oh. And uh, this is kind of state of the art for 1928. This was a trousseau dress. Do you know that's something you could wear today easily? It is so beautiful and timeless. And this piece is worn by Mrs. Lillian Sivier. She uh, wore it, she's from Milwaukee. She was a Milwaukee socialite. And she wore it to the coronation of George VI in 1937. And that is amazing that a socialite from Milwaukee goes to the coronation of a king. Well, her husband was a, uh, the, was a representative the, to the court for the iron industry of the United States. I see. And this dress, which I believe is the last one, is oh. one of our most fantastic gowns. This was designed by Irene, who was MGM costume designer and went on to open her own shop in the late 40s, early 50s. This is 1952-53. It was worn by Charlotte Kohler, who was the governor's wife at the time, to Eisenhower's first inauguration in 1953. How many dresses are in this collection? We have uh, close to 2,000. Oh my gosh, how did you get your hands on this collection? It is so rare that these would be shown together. Yes, and I should point out that half these dresses belong to Mount Mary University. This is a joint collaboration. Oh, that's wonderful. It was their idea, they approached us and we thought, this is a fantastic way to get some of our best clothes out, some of their best clothes out, and let people see them. What is the cost, and where are you located? We're at 30 North, Car uh, North Carroll Street, which is on the square at the top of State Street, mm -hmm. and it's a $4 suggested donation. Oh, um, so it's pretty $4 reasonable. $4 for seeing real history. Thank you so much. We appreciate Leslie Belay coming in and showing us these dresses. This is just an amazing exhibit. I should also just point out we're going to rotate the dresses about midway through February. So half these dresses you'll see now and half of them you'll see later on. See, that's great. So a little bit, you know, to, to look forward to now and something later as well. Thank you yes. so much. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you that for having me. That was fantastic. And now let's take a look at some pretty fantastic temperatures. And we're saying that uh, not in the happy sense, I would say, <laughs> Brian Dukes. What do we have? Minus 25, minus 30 degrees in wind chill?